Hey guys, I know it's probably been two or three weeks since I've done one of these little deals about TNA, but I don't know, personal life bullshit and crap like that, uh, and just ain't got around to one. But I figured I'd give you one tonight because tonight's show wasn't too bad. I actually pretty much enjoyed it. And they're building up to 10 10 10 bound through glory. Yay! Yep, yeah, I'm so. Excited. Well, tonight's show starts with the uh, Kurt Angle taking a phone call. I guess he's talking to Hogan. He heads to the ring and cuts a really good promo and talks about the build up with uh, Anderson and Jeff Hardy. And tonight he's going to take out Abyss. Uh, personally, I, I enjoyed it. And then Abyss comes out and Abyss. What I like about what they're doing the best right now is he's just no holds, I don't give a damn, and is willing to fight anybody for anything right this moment. And I like that. Uh, well, they have a brawl, they brawl all the way to the back, they go to commercial, come back, they're still brawling, and it took like all of security plus uh, D'Lo Brown and uh, Pat Kenny and... I think it was Terry Taylor, but there's all these guys that took them to pull them apart. And I, it was awesome little deal. Real good build up, and they have a cage match then or not. Well, uh, this leads into Beer Money versus Dreamer and Rhino. And this is all the setup for. EV2 versus, how are they doing it now, Fortune, yeah, when this first started it seemed like it was going to be a really good storyline, but it's a nice little build up on it, to me this was the only weak part of the night, and it was a decent little match, but it was really short, uh, Dreamer gets the pin after he gives him the Dreamer driver, which is the Death Valley driver, all y'all know this. Uh, they had some really good spots and dives at the end because it was a lumberjack match. Uh, Sabu dives at the end. Well, anyway, it, it, it was real good, I, but it was just real short. It wasn't a bad match, it's just not enough television time remained. I mean, and then I, I'll tell you why it wasn't no television time remained. At the end of the brawl, uh, EV2's fighting with Fortune, there's a brawl, Foley says, I don't want to see anybody else flying, and they want Rick Flair in the ring with him. There's a promo coming. Alright, uh, the promo is after commercial. They come back, Flair, Foley in the ring, and they did a awesome, great promo. One of the best spots in the promo, and some people hated it, was this big chick out in the audience had Foley's new book and Flair goes out gets it elbow drops it knee drops it kicks the shit out of it and uh yeah some people didn't get it they thought it was a joke and I'm like no because that's a new book you know Foley's always been a bestseller well anyway another good pot just it was a spot in a promo and you don't see this but Flair slapped his head and punched his head and starts bleeding. And Foley goes, well, you think you're a badass? I can do that too. And he starts rare back and knocking the hell out of himself. And before he was done, he had a split eyebrow that required, I think, four stitches, I believe, on live television. Uh, he busted his own mouth wide open. And I was like, holy shit. And I was like, this is one of the most intense promos I've seen it for fucking ever man this was great this was worth the whole night I mean everything was good tonight I had nothing to bitch about I swear but I mean it was really good so anybody that didn't see that promo I recommend go to YouTube or or whatever and find it and watch it it was really really good and it sets up for they're gonna have a live show next Thursday called Before the Glory and it's going to be Foley versus uh, Flair in a last man standing match and Flair said if Foley could beat him that uh, Flair 
would kiss Foley's ass. There you go. Uh, next, I had Generation Me versus Ink Ink. Well, one little thing before I get into their match. Uh, right before the match starts, well, it's before the commercial. They show uh, Alex Shelley and Chris Saban walking in the hallway. Well, Saban's been out for a while with a supposed hurt neck from Generation Me. Okay, that's it. Uh, well, Dream Me and Ink ain't got there. And to be honest, it wasn't a bad little match. It, it's another one. It just could have used a little more time. Uh, I'm not going to say the promo should have been shorter. But sometimes the promo... Yeah, this built up to something. That's two legends. It'll never happen again that good. Well, it'll probably happen again, but not in a while. Not for a while. But uh, they have a good little match. Uh, Generation Me wins. Uh, he King's not a bad tag team, dude. To be honest with you, TNA does have the best tag team going right now. Uh, Generation Me is very good. Uh, a lot of people are kind of crapping on saying there's some wannabe Hardy Boys, but I've been watching them since the Indies, and that's not even close to what they want to be. So y'all need to go check out some Evolve, Chikara, Ring of Honor, anything you can find on the guys. They're not wannabe Hardy Boys. Anyway, after the match, uh, they put, God, what's his name? Uh... The army guy. That's why I'm drawing a blank right this minute. But they they put the army guy up on the top red right, like they're gonna do that double DDT that they put Alex Shelley out with, and uh, machine guns come out and make the save. Pretty cool little. Like I said, besides it being a little short, it was good. Uh, next match is Anderson versus Joe, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't see all this match. I got to go back and watch some of it. I only missed just a little. But uh, Anderson went over, and that honestly surprised me in a roundabout way, but it didn't in a roundabout way, because you had, you got Joe, Sting, and Nash throwing out a challenge to Hogan, Jarrett, and Joe. So, personally, I didn't think this match should have had an ending, but it did, Anderson beat him, clean. I thought this should have been like a DQ, to be honest with you, but that's just me. So, but it didn't add her some more. And it wasn't a bad match. It was it was okay for what it was. Uh, Kendrick versus AJ. Dude, this match has the potential of being a really good new feud if they do it correctly. It was for the television title. Thank God, you know. Hey, we have TV each week. Put that title out there each week like WCW used to do. That used to be one of my favorite titles. You always saw that damn title. That was awesome. You saw Regal and Steamboat and Austin. and Man, it's just Anderson and just all these great wrestlers. And it's like it wasn't the biggest belt, but it meant so much. Because you used to see that belt almost on every single weekly show. It just meant so much. I remember reading one time that Ken, not Ken Anderson, Arn Anderson said they called that the workman's belt because you had to be able to work and wrestle weekly, daily, on every every televised show because that belt was on every show. But anyway, I really wish TNA would do that with that belt. But the match itself was real good. I, I actually liked it. I ain't gonna say it was the match of the night because unfortunately it wasn't. Uh, it had some really good spots in it. Uh, not a whole lot of psychology behind it. And the finish didn't hurt it because it, it's like they're building Kendrick a little. And they're, they're doing a lot with the guy, but I'm not real sure on his character. It's kind of like he's crazy and he's wrestling for a higher power. It's like he's a little screwed up version of the ultimate warrior or something i don't know but, but the match itself was good uh morgan jumps up after he dives on morgan just no reason he just dives on morgan but uh morgan jumps up grabs his uh grabs his leg crotches him 
uh, AJ pulls him down uh, and gives him a Styles Clash finish. Like I said, it's a good match. I, I enjoyed it. The next and the final match is Kurt Angle versus Abyss. And let me tell you something. For anybody that's been crapping on Kurt Angle, and there's plenty of them to do it, and anybody that craps on Abyss, there's plenty of them to do that. I'm going to tell you right here, right now. This is the match of the night. Uh, Kurt Angle and Abyss was a hell of a brawl inside a cage. Uh, you saw Abyss do a flying move off the I think it was the second row. I don't think he went to top. Uh, you had Kurt go to the top of the cage. Uh, you have at the end the refs bumped and knocked out. Kurt's bloody. Kurt did the frog splash. Kurt went to ankle lock. The black hole slam, choke slam. The shot treatment, the Kurt, the angle slam. I mean, if somebody had a bitch about this match, and I don't even consider the ending a bitch, because it, it, it wasn't. Because they're building angle, they're building Anderson, comes out and make a save, because there's no way to, for, because Kurt's laid out and hurt, and Abyss is trying to find a way to get out, so he comes out, and Anderson goes over the top of the cage, and he fights. Abyss and Abyss just guts his ass and Black Hole slams him. I'm like, that's how you build a monster. That's how Big Show should be for WWE, but he's not. You know, now he has a punch. But anyway, uh, I don't want to talk about WWE, but Abyss is built right, man. I mean, right now they got him as like an indestructible machine. It's just fucking awesome. Uh. Well, at the end of the match, my assumption is because they never announce a winner. But uh, he's laid out Kurt Angle and he's laid out uh, Anderson. He walks over, grabs the damn rent, the door, and picks it up off the hinges and tosses it. And he walks out. And they said the first one to hit the floor could win. So my assumption is Abyss won the cage match. And it was a good match. If you don't like this, you don't like cage matches, in my opinion. But guys, uh, it looks like Blind for Glory is going to be a hell of a card. I'm really looking forward to it myself. I'm going to find it on uh, online here. And I'm going to watch it. So guys, uh, I'll probably do this again next week because I'm curious on a couple of things that's going to happen. Uh... I said, if y'all got an opinion about what I say, say something to me. It's fine with me. I don't mind opinions. As you see, I got one of my own. But I give this show, it was a, you know, it was a thumbs up. It wasn't a thumbs down on nothing. Oh, I'm going to hit on one last thing before I get off. Because I was disappointed. The last two times I, I haven't done this, they had women's tag matches. And, man, they were good. Really good stuff. And now they haven't had any. But uh, they made Mrs. Chessmacher or Thessmacher or whatever the hell her name is the GM of the women's division. I actually think this could be something interesting. So guys, I'm out of here. It's been cool. Maybe TNA will be the savior of wrestling because right now WWE is a lot of garbage. But we'll find out, won't we? So guys, I can say, always give any wrestling a try for some in your area. Go check them out because they bust their ass just as hard as the big guys do. And they're making smaller bucks, but they bust their ass hard, bro. Y'all take it easy.